Hello and welcome back to Let's Play True to Grad with me, Frankenton. Let's go buy this winterized camouflage. Reduce the price of it by, by 12 rubles. Alright, hope it was worth it. Say there's two more we can find. I'll rock this for a bit. Let's go see if this guy has my weapon he promised me. If not, I'm gonna have to wait till the next day. You ain't get machining acquaintance. He greets you with a nod and glances suspiciously around the shop. After ensuring you're both alone, he usually passes you a tightly wrapped parcel. This is what you asked for. Thanks again. Just keep it hush hush, okay? Accept your reward. There you go. A fine looking pistol. It'll do you more good than me. Not much obliged. Take a look at your new gun. Special pistol. Our seven strength though, so it's not gonna help Blaze one bit. At most we can reduce it by one one strength, I think. Alright, let's go to the outskirts and see if we can't train that dog. I anticipate that'll net us a dog companion. It's very similar to how you get Zulbars, it requires a certain amount of survival in order to recruit. Oh, we'll see. We also haven't been to the dam yet, have we? It's about revealing that location on the map. It might be revealed on the map, but I just didn't see it. Haitian looks at you expectantly, long, wet tongue lolling. Well, Haitian, what do you think about a little workout? The dog goes cross side and gives you a little whimper. You should bark at strangers or anyone the slightest bit unusual, and bite people who hurt your master. Bring the dog to his master and ask him to repeat the command attack. The animal realizes he's supposed to attack you. How are you going to pull this off? Use your knowledge of animal instincts to trigger Haitian's aggression. Recalling the many stray dogs you've seen whilst wandering the wasteland, you would quickly anger Haitian by growling with the exact right tone. When his master says attack and unleashes him, the dog lunges forward and starts firstly biting your pant leg. You repeat the exercise a couple of times until the command sinks in. Oh, wonderful. Next command. You taught him everything a dog should know. Perhaps you're imagining it, but the smiling mutt looks grateful for your instruction. Get the dog to one side, for some inexplicable reason, teach him how to pull the pin of a grenade. <laughs> Using simple words, gestures, and charts drawn in the snow, he explained to the dog that next time he sees Master with a grenade, he should pull the pin with his teeth. My job is done here. My job here is done. I better go. So this short man is still having dog troubles. Uh, greetings, Laowai. He wanted something. Now let's talk about the results of Haitian's tr uh, training. Hope you bring good news, Lao Wai. I'm done. Your dog is a new person. Or, dog now. I see you've driven some sense into this hound, Lao Wai. As a token of my gratitude, take these 30 renminbi. Hey, don't pull that sour face. I'll pay that sum in rubles, of course. Let's see. 30 renminbi equals 300 of your local currency. A pleasure doing business with you. Your dog was wilder than most wolves I've encountered. Claiming it was a heroic feat, deserving of a more heroic fee. Cough it up. 
I cannot doubt the word of such a seasoned warrior and wolf whisperer. For you, an additional 10 renminbi, or 100 rubles. No, oh, thank you. Now I'll take my leave. Well, heck yeah, we got paid. Alright, uh, next quest we had, I guess we just go back to the tavern. And continue the... Revolution. Oh wait, actually, let's take this exit here, because this should take us towards the dam. We'll save that for later. Let's go ahead and go after the quest. So Strike hasn't returned, unless who's this guy. The stocky fellow loudly gulps his beer and glances around the tavern. Seeing you, he gives a broad grin and points to a nearby stool. Take a load off, brother. Make a lich. More beer for my friend. Is that how we roll? This little bully gets a beer, and his partners in the misfortune which is my life get not. You're right. That's a crappy way to roll. Make a lich. A glass for everyone present. Uh, sitting across from him. Thanks. Miklitch brings you a mug of Trudegrad's classic light beer, and you take a pool. The day's been lived for not lest you had a pint. By the way, I'm a Nikita the Lucky Devil. Nodding. Uh, my name is... Nikita sips his beer and shifts closer. Robin the Vegetarian Bobbin. <laughs> Donnie. Uh, let's drink to our new friendship, Donnie. Thanks, glass is with you. Hope that someday you will find your happiness. Uh, listen, Nikita. I ask you a couple questions. Go ahead. Ask. Uh, tell me something about yourself. I was still an ankle biter when the nukes fell. But you know, I believe the world has become better. Now everyone is their own boss. The only drawback is the ever present chance of catching a bullet in the skull or a ship in your gut. I'm saying the winner in Trudegrad. But generally, I spend my life on the road. New experiences, new friends. Gal pals as well as f Gal pals as well, if you get my drift. As long as my followers don't disappoint, it's all good. What can you tell me about Trudegrad? It's difficult living in Trudegrad if you don't have capital. But if you're bright, you can always get some. Whether you're smart, strong, or agile, you'll be golden. Just be outstanding at something. That's all you really need. Uh, what's going on outside the city? Something bad is coming. Ten times while walking back to Trudegrad, I came across bandits who were seemingly on patrol. I had to detour around them. Otherwise, they would have killed me. Mark my words. I mean, I get it. That's a post-apocalypse for you. In Krasno, you can't take two steps outside without getting into a heap of trouble. But the outskirts of Trudegrad were quieter in the past. Not anymore, I guess. I heard any good rumors. Munkle's colleague's brother's son has a stepsister in the village of Little Geese. Once she found a birch bark scroll on the step outside her home, kind of like a letter from an, letter from an admirer. It said things like, I'm in love with you, yet I dare not show my face, yada yada yada. You know, old timey romantic crap. The girl started an extended correspondence with this mystery man. She left her replies near an old oak tree, along with all sorts of gifts. Jam, cookies, etc. And the morning after, it always disappeared. This affair lasted over a month. So her brother decided to visit her and fix her ancient well. He climbed inside, and lo and behold, there's a huge mirror down there. They're sitting in a pile of birch bark scrolls. Turns out he built a career out of deceiving women in small settlements around Trudegrad, made them fall in love, and leave him sweets. The bastard. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, can we talk about something else? Nikita nods in agreement. Uh, why are we partying again? I just got back from a very profitable trip. Made more money than I deserve, to be honest. Looks around. 
Um, listen. Where's everyone? Mikolich used to have a full house every day. Now it's as dreary as a tomb. After the shooting at the factory, the regulars went into hiding. Oh, that... Oh, makes sense. Cop was leaving the tavern just as I came in. That he's looking for rebels. Stretches his legs. Changes in the air. I can feel it. Good thing, too. Change is always welcome in the end. For those who survive, anyway. Yeah, okay. But you never told me why you're having a party. Oh, right. One day I was walking past Mama Hump's abandoned amusement park. It moves closer. People have disappeared around it, and there are whispers that that place is cursed. I always suspected there was some loot hidden inside, and I was spot on. Quaff's beer. In the depths of the park, I found an entrance to the subway, and within, several explosive vests and a brand new radio set. No owner in sight. I piled everything into a wheelbarrow and hustled it out of there as just as the sun was setting. Call me superstitious, but I never stay in that place overnight. Stories about curses don't just appear out of nowhere. Is this new? Uh, explosive vests. Ordinary padded jackets rigged with dynamite, detonators, and a radio receiver. They have to trigger them from a distance. Air raising, right? Who did you sell that swag to? To a stalker buddy of mine who sells his stock in a market in the outskirts. He's probably sold them by now, though. I see. I look at your watch. But would you look at the time? It's leave o'clock again. Buys things for a good price. I'm never gonna use this. I'm gonna sell that as well. I don't need this with the uh, armor I currently have equipped. So, and I'm taking a bit of a loss here, but that's okay. A make list of bartender whistles habanera from the opera Carmen. When he spots you, he sets down the glass he was polishing and asks without any particular interest, oh, "What's your poison?" A oh, one new assignment from Comrade Shrike, please. Careful not to turn his head, Mikulich moves his eyes from side to side, then softly answers. Chatter from the second tier, why don't you? In short, Reich asked me to tell you the time has come to deal an ideological blow to the rich. Every print house in Trudegrad already serves the interests of the city authorities. All except one little shop on Kalatushkin Street, that is. You get where I'm going with this. I let Mikulich finish his thought. I need that joint's head typesetter to print our propaganda. And what propaganda are we talking about here? It's all about politics, comrade. Of course, for a guy like me, working in one of their factories or crossing paths with the private police is already enough to radicalize me against the authorities. But the comrades of the committee decided it was also necessary to kindle the fire of revolution with passionate words. To this end, our ideologically talented craftsmen have produced the first issue of Red Carrot. This publication will teach the philos philosophical tenets of the late Morcovin as well as share the secrets of industrial sabotage. Only one trifling detail remains. Persuade the printer to print and distribute it on our behalf. Uh, tell me about this Mor Morcovin chap. I don't know. It's another bloke with his own theories on improving everyone's lives. I don't give a darn. But if his writings can convince people that the seventh heaven is robbing us blind, then I'll stop by his grave with some flowers when we're all done. And why are you interested in the Kalatushkin print house? Like I said, the only ones who aren't already working with the, are for the city officials. Okay, I'll negotiate with them. Blaze, write this down. The printing house is located on Kalatushkin Street. The director and main employee's name is Virikhanov. Convince him to cooperate and come back for your reward. Mikulich, I've got a crazy question for you. Why are you helping the revolutionary movement? Well, first of all, 
Those topside sods are selling off huge chunks of the city to I don't even know who. If someone doesn't stop them, one day they'll sell off my tavern to some top hat bastard without me even knowing. Second, life in Trudograd wasn't amazing before. At least the trams function according to a schedule. The streets were swept, and the police are actually caught bad guys. Now, now we've got none of that. And finally, these guys are wrecking small businesses. They want to own everything. That's it. That's why I do what I do, and help who I help. Now listen, Mikulich, where did everyone go? This interests me as well, comrade. Hope everything is alright. Just keep your mouth shut about it. The cops are stomping all over the city, looking for pockets of resistance. They've been by my place a hundred times already. Do everything I tell you, you'll find out where our guys are hiding. They'll have your pass to Seventh Heaven, too. Understood. Let's go, Blaze. We have work to do. Actually, I do have one other thing I want to do before I commit to this quest. I want to go to um, the docks. I've got to talk to the guy that gave me the assignment to go to the cold flood plane. See if I can update him on the truck that I pulled out of the swamp. And I also want to go to the stalker merchant in the outskirts and see about the explosive vests. I don't know why some random NPC... He didn't even give me a quest. He just told me about the vests. He told me about them in the first place. I might go buy those just to have them on hand. That seemed to be the entire reason the NPC existed was to tell me about them. So... Alright, nothing new there. It's a waste of my time. But at least now we know. really don't need to stop by the marketplace. I don't have a lot to sell. I guess I can sell this. I'm not going to use this. Keep on trekking. What's wrong with me? I'm weak. What did I take that made me weak? I had taken tea. Does that make you weak when it wears off? Eating coffee? Alright, to the stalker guy. Well, I guess he wasn't lying. He doesn't have him anymore. Huh. Okay. 
I guess it was just a dead end lead. I guess to uh, Kalatoshkin Street, see if we can't convince the print house to print propaganda. building was the print house. Not that one. Pretty sure it's by itself. I don't know if it's gonna be this one either. Oh, here it is. Alright, perfect. A uh, printer of Rikhanov still looks half ready to howl in despair. At least he's more content than before. Hello again. How can I help this fine whatever it is outside? I'm here on urgent business, Rikhanov. Tell him about your assignment. Printer listens to your plea with a sour grimace before interrupting your tirade with a follow up question. Who are these revolutionaries of yours when Capi Capybaro's gang were squeezing me like a pimple? Or do you only talk about highbrow ideals instead of acting on them? I want to threaten him. I mean, can you hear yourself talk? I got rid of Capybara for you, didn't I? Here I thought you helped me out of pure kindness. Does this mean the revolutionary underground has been watching me from the shadows all this time? Why didn't you tell me before? You didn't ask. Well, in that case, from now on, all their leaflets, brochures, etc. will be printed. No questions asked. Thank you. That's all I wanted to hear. Bye. And our buddy just leveled up. We're looking at some martial arts, right? So every next hit deals the same, same target up to more critical chance. That might be worthwhile. Evasion for missing hit points. Let's do this instead. So knockdown chance plus 10% martial arts. All right, then I guess we just return to Mikulic, turn in this quest. I'm trudging along, knocking out a bunch of like small assignments. Feels good. We successfully uh, convinced all the bandits in the city to not attack us. It's been a good day. Oh, who's this guy? The lone guitarist stands on the tavern stage. He absentmindedly tweaks his strings inside softly. Uh, what's the reason for the concert? The man stops playing and inspects you from head to toe, sliding the bow off his glasses to the tip of his nose. Uh, the owner of the establishment asked to liven things up a little. It's just that, nah, never mind. If so, can you answer a couple of questions? Nah, bud, don't even start. This is not the right time. Sigh. Then at least tell me what is your name. Laughter of the musician at your service. Shakes your hand. It's just a mildly creative pseudonym, though. Actual name is Oleg. Uh, what's your problem, Oleg? You really want to know? 
otherwise I wouldn't ask. Then listen, I used to have a golden pick to strum the strings, and strum them I did. Oh, I did. Hmm. You could group to my music for hours on end. Was it really made of gold? Nah, plastic. But it's had a very positive influence over my creative work. I see. That's what happened to it. I lost it, when it's tore outside the city walls. But, I ordered a new one. A really similar looking, uh, or sorry, really similar looking, from the Honest People Society. To the smugglers in the docks. Only they won't deliver it to me. They should get it when the stuff in the city calms down. Well, when's that gonna happen, huh? Well, you're in luck, fella. I found your pick. Hand over the cherished pick to the musician. He immediately uses it to strum the strings and shutters, as if an electric discharge ran through his entire body. That's the stuff. Thanks, bud. Here. Takes out a crumpled 100 bill and hands it to you. Money well deserved. Oh. And just feel the inspiration. Step aside. Alright, step aside. Cool. Uh, the tavern keeper pensively picks his teeth with a matchstick, nods to you, and moves closer so your conversation won't be overheard. I can see from your eyes that you're not here for a drink. Or am I wrong? Uh, yes. Vrik Vrikinov agreed to print our stuff. Would well, you look at that? Do some work for the other revolutionaries, eh? Anyway, here's a thousand rubles strike left for you. Once we're done here, I'll call the top brass and get them to send some paper pushers over to Vrikinov's place. That'll get him started for the first issue. Uh, cool. So we're ready for our next assignment. Tavern Keeper offers you and Blaze a smoke from a silver cigarette case. You both accept without giving it any thought. The cops have lost their marbles. They're not just attacking revolutionaries. They're roughing up anyone who uh, sympathizes with our cause. Never thought I'd have to use fancy words like oppression, but that's exactly what it is. Right now, they're preparing to arrest a wealthy bird from the upper stories of the city. The merchant Volkova, who's helped fund uh, Strikes Boys a bunch of times. Our informants are dead certain of it, so we have to act fast. And by we, I mean you. Uh, listen to Mikulich ramble on. The merchant lady must be taken somewhere safe before she's captured. The people need to know that we never leave our friends in the lurch. Now uh, listen quietly. Go to her house on the second tier. It's a decent neighborhood up on the rooftops. You'll find out all the details of the evacuation when you get there. Uh, this last is rock solid. Should know exactly what to do. Plus, she knows how to find the committee's current HQ. There, you'll both get your reward and a pass to Seventh Heaven, which I remember you asking about when we first met. I'll lay low in the meantime. Revolutions are all well and good, but someone has a tavern to run. And that someone, c'est moi. Alright, I got you. Time to head it out. Oh, well, perfect. So before we do this quest, I'm probably going to go to the dam. No quests have taken us in that direction quite yet, and I'd like to explore it before we do anything else. Let's go ahead and head that way. Oh, alright. It's about time. <laughs> we got lucky so far. So what's with all the blinding shots in this game? Hey, not a big deal for my build, but it's been happening a lot.
All oh, right, now leveled up. Fantastic. No food on any of these guys. There we go. Not a ton, but it's something. Let's go and use a med kit. And level ourselves up. I'm gonna do speechcraft. Let's not save it for this next. I don't know what constitutes a rare item. I guess just certain weapons and equipment. Um, I don't know which ones are considered rare though. <laughs> Maybe there's some items you can only get if you grab that perk. I'll say I'm running a little low on med kits. Because I keep going blind. <laughs> I keep getting blinded by enemies. I'm gonna pass by. Well, I do have stuff to say. It'll, it'll be fine. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. In the next episode, we will explore the dam and let's go from there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.